Today, I'm gonna... Hi, Mart here, and welcome back to another episode of Draw Every Day. Today, it's gonna be all about color. Yeah, again. But today, we're gonna color hands, but without reference. And that's gonna be kinda harder. At least, I think. Because now you have to actually figure out the light source, plus color scheme, which you should probably figure out even then. But now you have to actually apply it better. And with this, uh, there's a question I'm getting asked a lot, actually. And that's how do I color things? How do I pick colors? And, uh, you know, how to make a painting that it's not muddy or it actually looks kind of good. Which I still don't know how to answer because, well, I think everything I've done is like, it's pretty much try and error. But... But that let me think, what advice I got when I start learning and I couldn't find anything, like any good advice that actually, that would actually help me to figure out something, uh, except like, you know, just try it and try another one. But that's not 100% right, because there's actually one advice, it's actually a book, that helped me a lot and I start improving like pretty rapidly after I read it and understood everything in that book. And I still don't understand everything in that book, but it's really like, it's one of the best books for coloring and painting, especially. Yeah, uh, the book is called Color and Light. You probably know this one because it's like the Bible for painters. It's a color and light, the guide for the realist painter and from James Gurney, the, the creator of Dinotopia, and it's amazing. Like, the information that's in this book is mind-blowing. The way how he's explaining everything is awesome and really understandable, and you can learn it, like, super fast from this book. And I think every artist either, like, every artist either should own this book or at least, like, read it once in his artist life. If you don't want to buy it or anything, just go into the library, there should be one, I think, and try to read it, because it's a really good book, and I think I learned the most out of it. Well, let's move to the actually painting hands. As you can see, I'm painting, like, the drawings I did at uh, day nine of this series, and what was my approach? Well, I kind of had an idea what color I want to start with, I've picked the mid-tone and that kind of helped me, you know, to set up some kind of color into it, to get some starting point. Yeah, I'm always talking about starting points and it's good to have some. So the, my mid-tone color, it doesn't really matter what kind of color you pick because with every color, color you can combine other colors with it and make the whole painting, like it doesn't have to be like 100%, you know, realism. It doesn't really matter what color you pick. You can work around it. It's all about warm and cold. Battle between warm and cold colors. And if you just have warm colors, the whole painting would look weird, probably. Kind of too warm, <laughs> let's say it. And uh, if you just have cold colors, the whole painting would probably look dead. Like, if it's some something that's supposed to be alive, the whole painting would probably look dead. And there will be probably no focus points or anything like that. So, try to balance these out. And that can give you some likeness into the painting as well. As you can see, I'm not paying that much attention to the detail. I'm just trying to put the colors down and make it look somewhat like a hand. Because most of the time you don't really need to do detailed hands because they are either out of focus or too small to actually for people to actually notice. So you don't really have to do like super rendered hands. Just learn how to make them look good from distance or appear good on a first look. You know, that's all you need to do. And for that you only need to get the structure done, which was done in a sketch, and get the light 
done. Color and light, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I'm not really giving you any any real advices, but I don't have any. It's really try and error and balancing the warm and cold colors. That's all I'm doing, like nothing else. It's really good if you have, you know, these uh, these wrinkles. I don't know how they're called, like folds in the hand. You know these. Uh, use warm color, like saturated colors. For example, saturated red, but don't go too dark. You can go light, but saturated, and that will give give the wrinkle some nice bloodiness in it, and it will give the hand kind of life like look if it makes sense well because if you would go like a uh, dark low saturated it would like it would look like mud i think shadows can be low saturated and also pay attention to colors that you're laying next to each other and look how the colors are working together what's the relations between those two colors are those colors complementary are are they not do they I know work well together or do they look muddy when they are next to each other or do you even see the difference between them or something like that you know uh, yeah sorry I'm not really specific in this video because when it comes to color you just have to try it and feel what it's right there are some coloring rules but uh, at the end it's all about what feels right so uh, I'm sorry once more that this video is not really specific but this is how I'm approaching on coloring hands. I hope you find it kind of useful. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.